both overshadowed by the actions of Vice President Mike Pence. The former Indiana governor attended the game, but left after numerous players knelt during the national anthem. But Pence wasn't the only one upset about the NFL's favorite form of protest, with Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones taking a hard stance yesterday. You had two defensive players raise their fields at the conclusion of the national anthem. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I don't know anything. I don't know about that. But uh, if there's anything uh, that is disrespectful to the flag, then we will not play. You understand? Under no circumstances will we, uh, as an organization or as coaches, players, not support and stand and recognize and honor the flag. All right, Calher, what's your reaction to Jerry Jones? Well, he... He's a 75-year-old billionaire. It's his team. He can do what he wants. I mean, the NBA as a league has told players they can't kneel. Um, you know, it's interesting. I, I would make the argument that Jerry has been more pro player than any owner of my lifetime. To a fault. Yeah, that's true. Often black players. And he has given to causes. He's incredibly charitable. If Jerry says, I got your back, but when you come to work, this is a business, so I, I'm uncomfortable with a framing that the most pro-player owner of my lifetime... Go ahead and say a pro-black player of any lifetime. That now we're framing him as Jerry is not for racial equality or fairness. Jerry has made so many mistakes on giving... You're a mature player. You played with immature players. Cowboys have had a lot of guys go sideways. You work for them. Sure. Jerry defends him. But now the framing is Jerry is anti-racial equality. That's not the Jerry I've watched for 30 years Jerry on television. Jerry does more than defend them. He financially backs them. He stands behind them when they're in court. And again, they, they're all great players, and it can help him win. It's easy. Michael Urban helps you win Super Bowls. Stand by him in the courtroom when he gets into trouble. I get it. But Jerry Jones, yes, you, you're 100% right. Jerry Jones is pro-player, pro-black player. Pro but Jerry Jones also has a point that he's made a long time ago. It's his platform. This whole thing of these NFL players, my platform, my platform, it's not your platform. You don't own the team. You didn't create it. Most of you play for three or four years tops. Your platform is over on Twitter. It's during your off time. When you put that uniform on, that's the Dallas Cowboys uniform. You're now representing the Dallas Cowboys. No different than if you worked at McDonald's and you put the McDonald's uniform on. They don't want you to interject politics into your serving of McDonald's food. They don't want politics introduced into football because the customer base is split 50-50 and they don't want that division. Sports are about unity. And so... I support Jerry Jones, and I hope other Stephen Ross of the Miami Dolphins has come to his senses and flipped on this issue. I hope the rest of them do. Again, they're giving you millions of dollars. You can take those millions and support any cause you want with that money, and they won't object, and there's nothing they can do about it. They're asking you when you put on my uniform. I don't want this to happen. My father owned a bar in Indianapolis. He told his employees what to do, or they got fired. <laughs> are, you, are you saying that that enough is enough? Do you think it's time for these protests to just stop? It's, it's, you made your point and it's time to move on? First of all, the protests should have never happened on the job because these players need to realize they get 49% of the revenue. They're in partnership to some degree with the owners in terms of the re revenue created. Do the protest. Again, if you got a problem with the police, I will join you at the police headquarters in protest. But I don't need it on my football field when that industry is generating all kinds of money and is dominated by 70 percent African-American players. Why tear down the business that's treating you well? Yeah, I mean, I, I think those are great points. Absolutely. I mean, it is America's team. And, uh, you know, the whole stadium stands for the anthem, not just the sidelines. I mean, it, it, you know, it, it's a the flag is a symbol of, of our country. And so. I think somehow the message got lost when, when a player, you know, Kaepernick knelt and, you know, that was his form of protest. I, you know, first of all, there's not any jobs out there where you can protest on the job, any, in, in, in either country, any country, you know. So, uh, uh, you know, I think, I think the whole thing is don't lose what you want to stand for and fight for and protest. Do it in a different platform. Do it, like you said, was, was fantastic, you, you know. You have uh, money. You can go in any uh, any uh, stage you want and do it there. But you know, keep it off the silence. Let's play football 
And let's not worry about politics. This is football. This isn't politics. It, it, it's, all, it's a television show. Th that's all this really is. It's a big TV show, and there are producers called coaches or owners or television executives, and there's a script they want you to follow. You know how we make money in the NFL, in baseball, even in basketball and all these other... We've sold this as a patriotic, coming together, unifying event, not as a politically divisive one. That's what they're pumping out and why the television ratings have been so great for so many years and why these contracts are astronomical. This TV show has gone off script in a way that's damaging to all the partners, including the players, but these players are in love with their Twitter brands. Let's say I owned it. Let's say, Tony, you are my best. Let's say I owned a... Um I owned a bar, a bar, yeah. and you were my best employee. You were my general manager, and I, you were the only guy I could rely on. And I had supported you and your family, but you were a very active political person. Would you be offended if I said, Tony, when, you, when the anthem's playing at the bar during the games and you do whatever you do to protest, it's, it's ticking off our customers. Would you be bothered by that? Because I, I sense with you, you're on this. Uh, uh, I mean, you went to Berkeley. You went to the most politicized college in America. Yes. Like, how does it fall for you? And, and that's, so part of my background is, it's all about, there was protest on my school every week. They had open mic on Sproul Plaza along with naked people walking around. <laughs> but but uh, and they're, they were, that's their platform. <laughs> I didn't mind it that much. But I think, here's, here's my view on this. Like, and I get the sense uh, that, like I just asked you there, it, it, it's ran its course. Everything has a course. Everything has, ha and they made their point. And it, it it did some awakening. It shook some things up. You cannot deny that. Yeah, that some 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 big stuff happened. Okay, but I think Canada. now, but now I believe this is my opinion. Now I believe it's coming to an end. Now it's become a huge. It's becoming a huge distraction that has nothing to do with the sport that we love right. that we want to watch. You got the vice president coming there doing his protest now. Let's get back to playing football. If you do want to kneel, you, I don't like the, like salute or something, salute the flag after you kneel, like make it patriotic. Let's get back to playing football. Just do something different because the way you're doing it now, it's over. You know, in our business, we see it all the time. Social media is an echo chamber. And if you do protest and you go to your phone, which every young person has all day, they salute, hey, more, yeah. more. So I think it is difficult for young people who are politically active when they grab their phone and everybody on that